So now in this video, we're gonna look at a uh, basic backup supply. So this is a little super uh, capacitor right there. Your money's better spent buying other stuff, probably. Um, but in case, you may find a use for this. Uh, my use is a demonstration circuit right there. So we are not powering the circuit yet. The super capacitor is discharged. It's uh, like 0.6 volts, not enough to light uh, the LED when I measured with the multimeter. This particular power supply provides a negative voltage when it is off. Um, but I have a shocky diode right here. So if we lose power, a short circuit or anything else that causes um, electrical problems with the power supply, it will not affect uh, this capacitor. This capacitor is just isolated this circuit thanks to the shotkey diode. So now that I explained that, uh, I'm gonna turn the power on. We're gonna see what happens. And it does look like the LED turned on instantly. Now you can see that um, we had you know, a fair amount of current there, much more than what's going through the LED right there. Uh, the LED is being powered. Parallel to it is the super capacitor. Though it started about 0.6 volts, um, it can go up to a maximum of 5.5 volts. Shocky dial is probably going to drop about 0.3 volts, maybe 0.2 once current gets uh, lower right there. Um, that's a good thing we could measure. But in uh, any case, the super capacitor is still charging right now. So this would be something uh, we expect to light this LED with the power supply um, right there all the time for the most part but sooner or later this power supply is gonna fail or something for some reason uh, the power of uh, the house goes out or something and uh, the uh, super capacitor will jump right into action at that point uh, once it's completely charged and uh, so yeah we're not gonna stretch this out it will get down to uh, just the current going through the LED at some point so I'll turn the power supply off there you can see the LED is lit right there the super capacitor is providing power. Gonna discharge over time, but um, you know, we got it lit. There you can see if I yank it out, the LED turns off. It is the actual power supply right now, but it is a uh, rechargeable power supply. Soon as power um, comes back, then um, we will have the LED lit. So you could use a larger uh, capacitors. A lot of them don't have internal resistance like this one though. So you gotta uh, build that into the circuit in some way. And, um, you know, that makes it a little more complex. Uh, I'll show that in other videos. I've showed it in previous videos. But there you go. Now we reapplied the power and the super capacitor is charging. So now we'll look at the uh, diagram. Let's start with the uh, ground over here. We have the LED. We're going to be using 5 volts. So we want to protect it with at least about 220 ohms resistance right there. 1000 ohm resistor, the LED won't be as bright. And, uh... Yeah, but it will last uh, longer. It'll take longer for the capacitor to discharge once we cut uh, power. But in any case, like 5 volts, we've got 220 ohms resistance. Again, we have a, a super capacitor right here, a small super capacitor. And with the price of these super capacitors, I think you can buy uh, like a, uh, what are they, um, like 100 uh, farad or something uh, super capacitor. Uh, but it would be a lower voltage and then you put a couple in series or something. You would need current to limit them because they don't have internal resistance. Apparently these ones do. They do limit current. Uh, so you can uh, charge them as we saw there directly to the supply. So very important. Um, but uh, most of the time you should probably have a you know low value high wattage uh, resistor um, right there. Low value both for it to charge. Uh, maybe it can like charge uh, super quick, but you also want it low so that uh, it doesn't really affect how much current's going through the load. It might be like 10 ohms, and then this is 220, so it doesn't really add a lot when it comes to the capacitor power in the circuit. Now, we have the uh, shot key down right there. So this one can handle up to uh, 15 amps, and when you put it reverse bias, uh, up to uh, 45 volts. So it's been a long time since I looked at the data sheet for this, but that's what I remember. You're using it uh, forward biased. So shot key means that it doesn't drop as much voltage as uh, rectifier diodes that are 0.7 volts. This one's probably closer to like 0.3 volts, but that's at higher currents. Again, this can handle uh, up, up to, this is like a maximum, 15 milliamps of current. So, you know, maybe like stop it at like seven uh, and a half or something. I usually try to stay halfway, but that's the part number, 15 SQ045. I think uh, 045 because some of them can handle over a hundred uh, amps of current, uh, certain ones. And um, so you might have like a one uh, right there. But in any case, that's what that part number means. It's pretty straightforward. That's the total part number for the component. Fit up to 15 amps, up to 45 volts when it's reverse bias. 
when it's blacking. So it can't black as much as uh, most rectifier diodes. But in any case, uh, this one we're going to keep uh, 5 volts most of the time. This particular super capacitor can handle about uh, 5.5 volts. That's what it's rated for. And uh, I'm going to actually just leave the power on. So the LED will not be affected. But there you can see, 4 a farad, right there it says 4.0. You can't see the decimal point. Now you can, right there. 5.5 volts, right there. That's maximum. So I think that's a, a capacitor the area there. And that's a super capacitor area uh, right there. They probably stacked a couple. And um, in any case, uh, you can apply up to uh, 5 volts across them. And uh, yeah, we're going between those two points. There's the LED. So now you can see this path. There's a shocky diode. You can see how big it is. Uh, right there and when I pull the uh, super capacitor I'm aiming through the camera so um, doesn't really go exactly where you think when you're aiming through the camera you don't see it as good so yeah now the uh, super capacitor is uh, charging it but yeah you can actually you can see the part number on there very easy you don't need a magnetic loop or anything 15 sq 045 right there so um, I just took one of these terminal blocks right there these are uh, pretty thick uh, cables there and yeah I just bent them into shape until they were both uh, facing that way I made sure that uh, you know I had the uh, the cathode to the side that I want because you can see it's hanging over to one side um, so it can push on other components or something if it's in the wrong spot so when I designed it I planned that all out I think I made some other ones where it's facing the other way so I can turn it uh, this way in the board I got a couple of them but uh, in any case enough about that that's just what I did long ago came across this diagram though so that's why we're covering this uh, right now but I still think it's a pretty cool demonstration of backup power that kind of blocks the uh, resistor but there you can see that path now we have the diode back so either this can charge it but it has to be recharged or the power supply can charge it but sometimes it goes out right there so we got one or the other in this particular setup, um, there's no diode once we charge the capacitor. So whatever uh, voltage we're powering the circuit at, once the capacitor is fully charged, that will be the power it provides until it starts discharging. It will go down. So sometimes you use uh, multiple uh, capacitors. And um, so when you cut the power, instantly the uh, voltage might change by a little bit. Um, but we won't worry about that right now. Just realize in this case. We charge the capacitor to the supply voltage minus whatever uh, the diode drops uh, right there. Um, pretty straightforward. So yeah, limit current for most supercapacitor. That's very important. Don't assume you can apply five volts to a supercapacitor like this. You got to limit current. One way is if you have a power supply that limits uh, current. So um, this came up recently where um, you know I had a, a power supply that apparently. I was using a limit current that wasn't uh, meant uh, for that. If you buy these actual like bench power supplies, um, you can buy the larger versions, you know, pretty decent ones according to reviews for like $50 and stuff. And they might be able to provide, you know, 30 volts up to 10 amps, you know, like 300 watts. Uh, you know, you got to provide power to them, but they can regulate the power to other stuff. Um, so yeah, that kind of came up when I had a power outage. I kind of just grabbed um, some stuff, jerry-rigged something together. It wasn't the best design. Um, you know, uh, the topics I'll cover in other videos when I come to uh, backup power. Um, you know, not terribly exciting. It'll take a while to uh, uh, explain it, and I'll probably have to make diagrams. But yeah, um, yeah, I think we uh, covered everything right there. Uh, yeah, I wrote, uh, I made this diagram a long time ago. We saw how much current was going when I started uh, charging this. I was worried that it held a charge so that it was already charged um, but we saw that it was discharged. Again once I cut power then uh, you know turn the power off there. This does provide a negative voltage so a lot of times if you got capacitors it might be a good idea to have a diode anyways for uh, keeping uh, capacitors uh, charged after you cut power. If you have one like this where it uh, pulls back and also maybe you have uh, like you might accidentally short circuit or something that can protect the circuitry if you have a diode like this um, going in there so again maybe concerns maybe not concerns just something to think about but in any case I think I rambled on for way too long now but I hope you enjoyed make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video